As you have heard, today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 34. It's the last, one of the last verses of uh, chapter 8. And as you all know, this week, we celebrate one of the major celebrations, feast of our Lord God and Jesus Christ, right? What was the celebration? Feast of finding the cross. And as you heard from the beginning, all the prayers, all the spiritual readings focuses on the Holy Gospel, uh, the Holy Cross. Our uh, brother, when he was in the beginning, was chanting the Psalms. He said, For those of the people who fears you, who abide by your law, you give them a sign, a sign of the cross. And then as we hear right now, we heard the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 8. One thing we need to understand is in our church, every week has its own theme. And our Father, Saint Yared, may his blessing be with us all, prepared everything and organized it the way that we praise, praise, praise God and please our Lord. And this week by itself, especially the Sundays, are called Meskat, the celebration. And even the, the, if you ask like the scholars of the church, what is the, the Mesmer of today or what is it called? They would say it's, Mes it's Meskat. So it's celebrating the cross. We're celebrating the cross. But if you hear the gospel, it's very interesting. If you go a little bit above verse 34, Christ talks about his sacrifice, his suffering. He called all his disciples and said, the Son of Man, as we discussed before, he called himself the Son of Man. But the others, the apostles, and everyone, since they know of his actions, they call him the Son of God. So because of his humility, his humbleness, he called himself the Son of Man. He said, the Son of Man is going to be crucified. He's going to put upon on the hands of the, the Pharisees and the Jews, and they will crucify him. And he will die, and he will get buried, and then he will raise from the dead. And at that time, they're shocked. They're scared. And St. Peter, what did he do? He set him aside. He called him. He set him aside and said, Lord, Lord. Let, let this be taken away from you. I did a good bit. Let this be taken away from you. What are you talking about? Like, you shouldn't be dying. We will die. But what did Christ say? Get away, Satan. Get away, Satan. You only know what's man's. You don't know God's plan, right? Get away, Satan. And after that, the next chapter, the next verse, the next verse, what he talks about is what we just read. He said, if a man desires to follow me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Let him take up his cross and follow me. Our celebration this week, we celebrated the Feast of the Cross. We were so jubilant. We were so happy. All our cross, all our clothes have the cross. In our forehead, we would have a cross. Uh, we, everywhere, like our, our necklace is a cross. Everything is the cross. But what kind of cross is that? That is the Lord Jesus Christ's cross, which is honorable, which is commendable. We're honoring it. We're honoring it, which is commendable. But we need to take our own cross. That's what Christ said. Whoever desires to follow me, he didn't say what? Let him take my cross and follow me. Because every one of cro our cross is completely different. Let him who wants to follow me take up his cross. Each and, and every one of us, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, we have our own cross. We have our own struggles. It could be from the, within, it could be from outside. A suffering that we need to endure, that we need to take up the cross. But you know what the world would do to us? They do two things. One, they would distract us as St. Peter so that we didn't take our cross. They said, oh, let, let it be not for you. Why you need to take up the cross? Why need, why need you to do like so multiple prayers? Just relax. Kick back, have fun. 
comfort. Don't take up your like. Why do you why do you stress yourself? That's the first thing that the devil would do. And the, you know what the second thing he would do? If we are above that, he'll find a way to bury the cross. That's what happened, right? In the story of the cross of Christ, through the devil's work, through the Jews at that time, they buried the cross. Every distraction that we have, everything that is a side of the following of Christ is burying our cross. It could be whether your sinful struggle that you have. That is your cross. Fight it until the end. What did Christ say? Let, he didn't say, let him take up his cross and that's it. He said what? Let him follow me. Follow unto where? Where are we following him? Where did Christ go? Up until the end. Up, up until his last breath, he was being persecuted. We need to follow Christ bearing our cross until our last breath. But for us in our generation, we pray once. We want instant happening. If nothing is happening, oh, it didn't work. Follow up the cross. And instead of burying the Jews at that time, they buried the cross. But what God would do in our life is find a way of that buried, you know, endurance or things that we need to endure, he would find a way to reveal that for us. But at that time, same way that we did of finding the cross of Christ, how we were jubilant, how we were happy, the way that we carry up our cross has to be thankfully. We need to carry up our cross saying, thank you, God, for this cross. How many of us would say that? How many of us would say we struggle, for example, sickness? Financial distress, social life distress, having, being lonely. How many of us would say, thank you, God, for this. This is my cross. I'll take it and I'll follow you. How many of us? If we don't do that, what we're saying is we're saying we're ashamed of the cross. In the book of Hebrews, there is this verse that says that um, let everything be gone except I wouldn't boast about anything except what I would boast is about the cross of Christ, whom the world is crucified and whom I am cru crucified to the world. This sign, when you have this sign on your neck, on your cloth, when we hold it, you know what we're saying? We died for the world. And the world is dead for us. That's what we're saying. St. Paul says this, the cross is the sign he gave you the sign. Why? It's to saying that when we see this, as Christ died on the cross, I died for the world. Whatever enticement that the world gives us, I died for that. A dead per person, if you nudge him, if you shout at him, he's not responsive. We need to be able to be unresponsive for the world's alluring, what the world gives us. If we do that, in the second coming in the kingdom of heaven, God is not going to be ashamed of us. But if we're ashamed, we hide this. If we're ashamed of the cross, if we're ashamed of our cross and also the cross of Christ in our life, he will be ashamed of us in the second coming. May God take that away from us and give us his wisdom, his courage, so that we would always take up the cross boldly without being ashamed and prophesy, uh, prophesy, uh, prophesy and testify about the cross of Christ and our own cross that is given to us. May the glory of God be with us all.